Let's get right into it. Number 10. The Personal Evacuation Drone Imagine you're stuck in a burning high-rise building. The stairs are blocked by flames, smoke is filling your lungs, and you're looking down from your 30th floor window thinking, well, this isn't ideal. You grab a briefcase-sized box from under your bed, open your window, and press a button. A compact drone unfolds like a mechanical butterfly, anchors itself to your window frame, and deploys a fire-resistant harness. This sounds like something from a sci-fi movie, but the technology to build this already exists. We have powerful drones that can lift humans. We have compact folding mechanisms that could make it portable. We even have the materials to make it fire-resistant. But it isn't a thing. The primary reason is liability. Imagine being the company that makes these things when someone's drone malfunctions. That's the kind of lawsuit that makes lawyers wake up in cold sweats. Then there's the cost. A drone powerful enough to lower a human safely would cost tens of thousands of dollars. And since it's something you hope you never have to use, it's a hard sell for the average person. Yet we're totally fine with spending thousands on other safety equipment we rarely use. Your car has airbags that cost a fortune and hopefully never deploy. Buildings have sprinkler systems that might never turn on. High-rise fires kill dozens of people every year in the U.S. alone, and that's not counting places like Dubai, where they're basically building vertical cities. Some prototypes have been tested, but they all hit the same wall. Regulations. Try explaining to the FAA why you want to sell thousands of human-lifting drones to civilians. The idea dies in a boardroom somewhere because nobody wants to be the first company to take the risk. So for now, we're stuck with traditional fire escapes. Number 9. Biofoam. You're a combat medic in the middle of nowhere. Your buddy just got hit and he's bleeding internally. Right now, there's not much you can do except apply pressure and pray. But you could have a simple injector and with one push, inject a special foam that expands inside his body and stops the bleeding. That's what biofoam could do. Think of it like that expanding foam you use to seal gaps in your house, but way more sophisticated. You inject this stuff into someone who's bleeding internally, and it expands to fill the abdominal cavity. The foam puts pressure on the damaged organs and blood vessels, stopping the bleeding long enough to get them to proper surgery. The foam is designed to break down in the body after a few hours, so by the time the surgeons are ready to operate, it's already starting to dissolve. No need to spend hours picking foam pieces out of someone's insides. Scientists have already tested this on pigs with severe liver injuries. A staggering 72% of the pigs treated with biofoam survived. Without it, only 8% made it. The difference is night and day, but nobody's making it for widespread use. Companies don't see enough profit potential in a product that's mainly useful for battlefield injuries and remote accidents. It's a niche market, and the research and approval process would cost a fortune. Never mind that it could save thousands of lives every year from car accidents and other traumatic injuries. So this potentially life-saving invention is just sitting on a shelf somewhere, gathering dust. Number 8. The Anti-Choking Necklace Imagine you're eating alone in your apartment, watching some Netflix, when suddenly a piece of food goes down the wrong way. Now you're choking. No one's around to do the Heimlich maneuver. Your phone's in the other room, and those precious seconds are ticking away. This is where the anti-choking necklace could save your life. It's like having a tiny paramedic around your neck. The necklace uses sensors to detect the specific vibration pattern and blocked airflow of someone choking. When it detects you're in distress, it shoots a precise, powerful burst of compressed air right at the blockage, like a tiny fire extinguisher for your throat. The air blast is designed to be strong enough to dislodge whatever's stuck, but not so powerful that it causes damage. But the medical device industry is extremely cautious about new technologies. One wrong move, one malfunction, and you've got lawsuits that could bankrupt a company. Imagine if the necklace went off while you were driving, or if it mistakes a normal cough for choking. Plus, there's the liability issue of replacing human first responders with an automated device. Insurance companies aren't jumping at the chance to cover this. Choking kills about 5,000 people each year in the U.S. alone. Most of these deaths happen when people are alone. The technology exists. The need is there. But the fear of what could go wrong outweighs the lives that could be saved. Number 7. Density Shifting Swimwear Imagine you are swimming in the ocean, and suddenly you get a leg cramp. Your muscles seize up, panic sets in, and you start going under. But instead of sinking, your swimsuit suddenly becomes as buoyant as a life jacket. This isn't science fiction. The technology to make this happen already exists. Exists. Scientists have developed a special fabric with tiny capsules woven into it. These capsules are filled with compressed gas, kind of like microscopic scuba tanks. When sensors in the fabric detect a combination of being submerged for too long and the erratic movements associated with drowning, the capsules burst. The released gas makes the fabric instantly super buoyant, turning your fashionable swimwear into a life-saving device. The best part is the whole process happens in less than a second. 
before you can even fully process the danger you are in, you are being pushed to the surface. So why aren't we all wearing these miracle suits? The big swimwear companies say it's too expensive to mass produce. They are worried about liability issues if the system fails. And some argue that people might take more risks in the water if they think their swimsuit will save them. Let's be real. About 320,000 people drown each year worldwide. That's like losing the entire population of a city like Pittsburgh every single year. Most of these deaths could be prevented. But until a company is brave enough to take on the cost and legal risk, this technology will remain a theoretical lifesaver. Number 6. The Crowd Crush Protection Jacket Imagine you're at a concert, packed in like sardines. Everyone's having a great time until suddenly the crowd starts moving like a giant wave. Before you know it, you're being squeezed from all sides. This happened at the Travis Scott concert tragedy and at countless other events throughout history. When crowds get too dense, people literally get crushed to death. And it's not from being trampled. You die because you can't expand your chest to breathe. There's a solution that could prevent these deaths. It's called the Crowd Crush Protection Jacket. Think of it like an airbag for your body. When sensors detect dangerous levels of pressure, the jacket automatically inflates, creating a protective bubble of space around your vital organs. This gives your lungs just enough room to expand, keeping you breathing until the pressure subsides. The technology exists. We already have pressure sensors in our phones. We already have quick inflate technology in car airbags and life vests. Combining these two could save hundreds, if not thousands of lives. The estimated cost to make one of these jackets would be less than $100. That's cheaper than most concert tickets. But good luck finding one on store shelves. Companies say there's not enough demand. Insurance companies won't touch it because of liability issues. Cars have airbags now, but back in the 1950s, people would have thought that was crazy. Instead, we're stuck with crowd management techniques that often fail. The next major crowd crush isn't a matter of if, but when. And when it happens, we'll all act shocked, even though we had the technology to prevent it. Number 5. The Internal Bleeding Detector Patch Imagine you're in a car accident. You feel fine, maybe a bit shaken up, but otherwise okay. The paramedics check you out and say you look good. You go home, take a nap, and never wake up. Internal bleeding is a silent killer. You don't see the damage until it's often too late. A simple patch could prevent this. It's a smart sticker you slap on your abdomen after any serious impact or trauma. Think of it like those mood rings from the 90s. But instead of showing if you're happy or sad, it shows if you're bleeding inside. When you have internal trauma, your muscle tissue releases specific proteins. This patch contains chemicals that react to these proteins. If there's internal bleeding, the patch changes color, kind of like a pregnancy test. This simple visual cue would tell you that you absolutely need to get to a hospital even if you feel fine. This technology isn't complicated or expensive to make. We're talking about something that could cost less than a cup of coffee to produce, but nobody's making them. The medical industry makes a lot more money treating severe internal bleeding than preventing it. A single CT scan to check for internal bleeding costs thousands of dollars. This patch would cost pennies. Then you have the fear of lawsuits. If the patch doesn't change color when it should, or changes color when it shouldn't, lawyers would have a field day. So instead of having this simple life-saving tool, we're stuck with the old way. Wait until you start feeling really bad, then rush to the hospital and hope you're not already beyond saving. Number four, the allergy detection pen. Imagine you're at a restaurant, staring at your food, playing Russian roulette with your allergies. You ask the waiter about ingredients three times. You even showed them your medical alert bracelet. But there's still that nagging voice saying, what if? Scientists figured out how to solve this problem years ago. It's called the allergy detection pen. Think of it like a pregnancy test for your food. But instead of checking for babies, it checks for things that could kill you. You program it with your specific allergens, peanuts, shellfish, whatever tries to unalive you. Then you just wave it over your food like a magic wand. If it detects even a tiny trace of your allergens, it vibrates or lights up to warn you. The crazy part is the technology for this has existed for over a decade. We already have similar devices that can detect gluten in food for people with celiac disease. The military has portable devices that can detect biological weapons. The science is sound. So why isn't everyone with a severe allergy carrying one of these? It's all about money. The people who need it most, those with severe allergies, are a relatively small market. About 32 million Americans have food allergies. But to a massive corporation, that's only 10% of the population. They don't see enough profit potential to mass produce them at an affordable price. Meanwhile, over 200,000 people end up in emergency rooms each year in the U.S. due to food allergies. Some don't make it out, all because a potentially life-saving device is sitting in some patent office, gathering dust. Number 3. The Micro-Stitch Skin Gun Imagine you're chopping vegetables for dinner, 
and the knife slips. Now you're looking at a cut that definitely needs stitches. That means a trip to the ER, hours of waiting, and a big medical bill. Or you could just fix it yourself, right there in your kitchen. You could use the micro-stitch skin gun. Think of it like a stapler for your skin, but way less terrifying. This handheld device, which looks like something from Star Trek, shoots out tiny dissolvable staples along with a medical-grade skin adhesive. You'd just clean the cut, line up the edges, and zap. Instant stitches. The micro-staples are so small you'd barely feel them, and they dissolve on their own after your cut heals. No more going back to the doctor to get stitches removed. But nobody's making these for consumer use. The technology exists, the patents are filed, but it's just sitting there collecting dust. The reason is money. Emergency rooms make a lot of cash from stitching people up. The average ER visit for stitches can cost around $500. Now imagine if people could just fix their common cuts at home for the $20 cost of a kit. That's a lot of lost revenue for the healthcare industry, and that's before the lawyers get involved. They get nervous when you give people DIY medical tools. They picture some guy trying to staple his head back together after a few too many beers. So this potentially life-saving, money-saving invention just sits in patent limbo while we all keep heading to the ER. Number 2. The Seizure Dampening Headband There's a smart headband that can detect seizures before they happen and potentially stop them. Using EEG sensors, the device can detect the specific brainwave patterns that are the warning signs of an oncoming seizure up to 20 minutes before it hits. 20 minutes. That's enough time to get somewhere safe, lie down, or take emergency medication. But it does more than just warn you. When it detects these signs, it sends tiny, targeted electromagnetic pulses to specific parts of the brain. These pulses essentially tell the overexcited brain cells to calm down. The seizure that would have been debilitatingly severe gets downgraded to just a mild episode, or is prevented entirely. Scientists have already proven this technology works in lab tests, but nobody's making these headbands for the public. There are only 50 million people with epilepsy worldwide. Apparently, that's not a big enough market to interest big medical device companies, especially when the development and approval process is so expensive. The technology isn't even that exotic. The sensors are similar to what's in your smartwatch. The electromagnetic pulse tech is based on transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is already used in clinics. This life-changing invention just sits gathering dust in research labs. Meanwhile, people with epilepsy are left hoping they don't have a seizure while crossing the street, driving a car, or holding their baby. Number 1. The Color-Changing Stitches Imagine you're recovering from surgery. Everything seems fine, but an infection is secretly brewing under your bandages. You can't see it, you can't feel it yet, but it's there, multiplying by the minute. By the time you get a fever and realize something is wrong, the infection could already be serious, requiring antibiotics, another surgery, or worse. Someone invented surgical thread that changes color when an infection starts. This isn't a complex computer or sensor. The thread is simply coated with a special dye that reacts to changes in the pH level of your body's tissues. When bacteria start their little infection party in your wound, they change the pH of the surrounding area. The stitches detect this chemical change and turn from a normal color to a bright, unmissable warning sign, like red or purple. It's like having a tiny foolproof infection alarm system literally sewn into your body. This could tell a patient or their doctor that there's a problem days before any other symptoms appear. But nobody is mass-producing these stitches. Why? Because regular stitches are dirt cheap to make, and they already work well enough. Introducing a new type of suture would require a massive investment to scale up production and go through the incredibly long and expensive FDA approval process. Hospitals won't buy them until they're FDA approved, but companies won't go through that approval process until they're sure hospitals will buy them. It's a classic catch-22. So this brilliantly simple, cheap, and potentially life-saving invention just sits there, gathering dust in a patent office, while about one in every 30 surgical patients ends up developing an infection that could have been caught days earlier. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.